Paul Pachter, CEO of Long Island Cares, the Harry Chapin Regional Food Bank, and welcome back to another episode of Breaking Bread from Long Island Cares. Our program right here on our YouTube channel, which brings you inside the workings of the Regional Food Bank, but we also have an opportunity at times to welcome special guests from the nonprofit human service fields here on Long Island. Today, I have the best of both, because first and foremost, I have Kerry Tuka who is the coordinator of Long Island Care's Children's Nutrition Service Programs, and my friend Spiros Tirkas from the City of Glen Cove Youth Bureau, who also happens to run one of our kids' cafe operations out in Glen Cove. Spiros, Kerry, welcome. It's good to see you again. Thank, Thank you. you. Kerry, I'm going to start with you. Children's Nutrition Services at Long Island Care's, what are we talking about? Well, we have three departments. We have our Kids Cafe program, which is an at-risk after-school program. For the Kids Cafe, we partner with after-school programs to provide nutritious meals for the children who attend. We also have a weekend backpack program, which we call Pack It Up for Kids. And in the Pack It Up for Kids program, we provide weekend meals for children who are identified as being at risk of not having nutritious meals available to them and these meals go home with them at the end of the day on Friday at school so that they'll have nutritious meals over the weekend. And you're currently working with how many school districts on Long Island for the Pack It Up for Kids program? 17. 17 school districts? No, 17 programs. So okay. some of our programs are school districts. Right. So then there's multiple schools receiving the packages in okay. that program. So. And these are weekend meals that go home for the children and their families? No, th for the children themselves. So they okay. are identified by a school social worker or a faculty member such as a, the child's teacher or possibly the school nurse. Um, and those meals are ready for them and sent home. Wow. for that child over the weekend. And the third program being? The Summer Food Service Program. So the Summer Food Service Program is a national program mm -hmm. um, and we provide meals for children, nutritious meals for children when school meals are not available to them. So we'll provide a breakfast or a lunch or both um, to children in need. So at times in the summer when schools are closed for the most part, right. Uh, we have a summer feeding program that takes place in numerous communities working with our partner agencies yes. to make sure that the children have at least one healthy meal Correct. during the summer when schools are closed. Then as you said on the weekends when schools are closed uh, we have the Pack It Up for Kids program yes. and currently how many school districts again are involved in that? Like 17. 20? 17. And then, of course, Kids Cafe. Yes. How many Kids Cafes right now? <laughs> Coincidentally, we happen to have 17 Excellent. Kids Cafes. And combined, if I'm not mistaken, we're talking about almost 3,000 children? Absolutely, yes. Who are getting food from our Kids Cafes, from Pack It Up, from Summer Feeding. Spiros, you, I've been to your program. It's a wonderful Kids Cafe program at the City of Glen Cove Youth Services. Describe Kids Cafes. Kids Cafe honestly has been a savior uh, for our programs. Um, I believe we started back in 2009 at the small conference. I happened to find somebody over at a Long Island Cares booth. We had a conversation and one thing led to another and 13 years in the making. Mm -hmm. um, in Glen Cove, uh, I oversee a couple of programs. Um, the After Three program has been the program that has worked with Kids Cafe the longest and has uh, had many things, but nothing but positive, so to say, mm -hmm. about the program. We are at four locations. Uh, we service uh, children from kindergarten all the way out to incoming ninth graders. Mm. Um, the kids, we all know, have a long day. They go through their school and then they come to us till about 6.30 every day. So when they come to our programs, they are greeted with a nice complete meal, a healthy meal, uh, which gives them the energy they need to continue mm -hmm. their day at the end. Um, some of these kids might not eat again at the end of the day, you know, until the next day. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we're able to provide something for them 
is great. Right. Uh, but it's more than just food at a kid's cafe. Correct. What other services do you provide? We have, uh, well, our program in general is academic, mm -hmm. recreational, and um, uh, educational, recreational, and we have different types of clubs that are more uh, career-based or career-focused, even for the little ones. Kids Cafe program comes in, we have nutritional programs, they learn what is the proper thing to eat, they learn why we eat certain foods and mm -hmm. what we should be looking for when it comes to labels and um, everything that goes around eating. Um, the vitamins, nutrition, uh, and minerals, sort of say, that are needed mm -hmm. for our bodies to continue moving forward. Uh, some of these kids come to us, mm -hmm. They have their snack, and then after they're done with their activities, they can be on their way to a soccer practice, a sports uh, activity, or whatever the case might be, and not be home till 9 o'clock. The body needs that energy. Um, between the newsletters that we receive from Long Island Cares and the academic programs that Long Island Cares sends us as well that we work with our kids on, mm -hmm. it's nothing but a positive. And we all know that if the kids learn at the young age how they should be treating their bodies, what they should be putting in their bodies, it's going to allow them to have a healthier life in the future. And these, these are children who also, correct me if I'm wrong, rely upon the free school breakfast and lunch program. So these are children that economically are in need correct. of support, not necessarily very poor children, but they come from families who are struggling. Uh, and you're filling a gap, an important gap. I mean, as you described. With your help. Sure. With Long Island. Well, thank you. With Carrie's help. <laughs> With Carrie's help. I mean, to be able to address their academic needs, whether it's, you know, individual tutoring on certain subjects, to provide recreational opportunities for them to sit down and have a healthy meal and improve, you know, socialization skills. Uh, and as you said, the kids are out, you know, could be from 8 o'clock in the morning till 9 o'clock at night, just like Correct. any other child. Correct. Kerry, what are some of the, uh, if at all, challenges you see in feeding children here on Long Island? Uh, honestly, uh, the greatest challenge that I have is, one, reaching the children, mm. uh, because the requirements to partner with a um, program means that they need to provide the homework help, the academic resources and the recreation and socialization for that program and um, they need to account for that plus mm -hmm. we provide nutrition education for them like Spiro was saying for their kids so um, it has to be a specific type of program because mm -hmm. all of this is what tackles the cycle of poverty that we're trying to um, change the so. meals the meals that we provide to the children in the kids cafe program these are prepared meals because you contract with a catering service yes we do 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 the programs have input into the menu selection yes yeah, so uh... two to three times a year we have a meeting with all of the program directors yeah. where we get together and we mm -hmm. talk with the caterer we talk about the the meal items that are working with the kids that they love that they enjoy um, and if there are any uh, items that they're really not enjoying, maybe they're leaving behind mm -hmm. on the plate. Uh, <laughs> the asparagus. <laughs> the asparagus sitting there. Uh, well, we try to incorporate the vegetable because mm -hmm. there's always the five components of my plate. Mm -hmm. We make sure we meet meal patterns. Um, so we meet with them, and the, the, our vendor has done a fantastic job of trying to adjust the menu to try and make it child-friendly mm -hmm. um, and, and meet the needs that the kids have. Yeah. You know. um, we also have some cultural issues. So some mm -hmm. we're sending out meals that some children have never seen. Right. You know, they, they wouldn't know uh, what a turkey and cheese sandwich <laughs> looks like, for instance. Um, and now here it is, and they're being told, oh, here's your mm -hmm. meal today, you know, but it's a different meal every day. So nice. we'll have, uh, you know, chicken and rice one day and mm -hmm. taco day and build your own pizza day. So it's really a great Kids meal want option. More chocolate milk. They want more chocolate milk. <laughs> <laughs> they always want more chocolate milk. Well, as long as it's, yeah. you know, 2% or 1%, yeah. they can have all their It's got to be fat free. Exactly. <laughs> but there are limitations, and, and so because we need to keep it a nutrition mm -hmm. program. Mm 
um, so that kids learn over the t over time how to feed their bodies. Like Spiro had mentioned, um, learning what is a healthy meal, mm -hmm. what does a healthy meal look like, um, is is very big, especially in our society. So the program really addresses more than just food. Yes. Because yes, the, I mean, you know, the child, children are growing up. Their social relationships, you know, are just developing. Their self-identity is developing. What what kind of challenges do you see, Spiro, just working well, with the kids at your program? First of all, I, I want to say that just being with Long Island Cares all these years and being, I think, from the beginning with the program, there's certain programs that reach a stalemate, and then there's mm -hmm. other programs that continue to grow. And it's been nothing but growing. I, we had some... Uh, headaches with some of the vendors in the past and all that stuff, but everything was just resolved amazingly. And I haven't even heard one complaint. Yeah. It's it, knock on wood, <laughs> you know, things are going amazing. Yeah. Um, but just going back to your question, what would you say? I, I don't know. You know, we're constantly working yeah. on it to improve the program all the time, and that's why I find Feedback. it very important to meet with our after school program sure, yeah, directors. Absolutely to find out what the kids are enjoying. I go and visit the programs. They so love that we can some of the food, I mean, the cheese sticks yeah. they love. It's your classic, yes. you know, uh, kid-friendly meal, so to say. And, and the hard part and the tricky part is to, tr to incorporate all that together and see mm -hmm. this is why we get this. And so it, it's communication. And the yeah. fact that children aren't complaining about what they're eating, that Correct. must mean we're doing something right. Correct. Uh, trust me, when a child doesn't like something, you're going <laughs> to hear the complaint. You're going to hear the complaint. They'll tell you. They'll be the first. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. It's my favorite part about walking into a program. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they you, uh, love to tell me. You just returned from a conference yes. in uh, New Orleans mm -hmm. that dealt with child nutrition. Our CACFP and conference, There you yes. go. So what did you bring back from the conference that you think now you can implement within our own children's nutrition service programs? Anything well, exciting? <laughs> exciting is, you know, the meal patterns. A lot of times, mm -hmm. you know, we, that doesn't change. We need to make sure that we get the right portion sizes and the right number of components to a meal. But the variety is there, and we've learned we learned some great ideas on how we can incorporate different kinds of food into the children's meals. Mm -hmm. um, that that maybe was, is a little bit out of the box, and we found some great um, resources there at that conference that um, where we can maybe obtain some child size mm -hmm. uh, portions of sure. of foods that um, will meet healthy meal pattern mm -hmm. requirements and yet are still fun for kids to eat and that's, that's what great. we want to do. Well hopefully uh, we'll be able to implement that as well. I probably have another dozen questions but unfortunately we've run out of time as we usually do on our limited series. <laughs> but I want to thank Kerry Tooker, our children's nutrition specialist coordinator here at Long Island Cares and the Spiros Tirkas, who is the coordinator, director of the City of Glencoe Youth uh, Services, Youth Bureau, for coming on and talking about children's nutrition. We've got to do this again because there's so much uh, going on that people need to know. Uh, if you want to know more about our children's nutrition services program, be it Kids Cafe or Pack It Up for Kids, the weekend program or summer feeding, visit us online at licares.org or call 631-582-FOOD can't be any easier than that. Until next time, this is Paul Pactor, CEO of Long Island Cares. If you like what you're watching, please consider subscribing to our YouTube program right here, Breaking Bread. We'll see you next time.